Hey guys today I will be doing what if Deku was One Punch Man Part 2. Last time we left off with the sports festival just about to begin, so let's begin. On the day of the exam, Deku is chosen to be the first year representative, giving a speech, welcoming everyone, and telling them he expects everyone to do well, not just for their entertainment, but so he can finally have a real challenge, telling everyone to try their best as that is all anyone can ask for and to go plus ultra. With the comment about being a challenge aggravating all the students in the stadium, as they think Deku is being cocky, however in reality, Deku is desperate to have some fun. After Deku steps off the stage, Midnight explains the first event, the obstacle race, with the race starting with everyone starting to run, while Deku just stands there, doing nothing, going to get some food, with the race coming to the end, with Bakugo finishing in first place, Shoto second, however they then realize that in the last second of the race, Deku ran the race, passing both Bakugo and Shoto, being first in the race, aggravating Bakugo as he thought he had finally won, but Deku was just plating with him. Midnight then explains the cavalry battle, with most people wanting to be on Deku's team, with Deku choosing the same people as usual, Ochako, Mai Hatsume, and Takoyami. Before the battle could start, Monoma walks up to Deku, complimenting his quirk, asking to shake Deku's hand, so he could copy his quirk, with Deku agreeing completely oblivious to what Monoma's quirk is, with Monoma happy, thinking that he now has Deku's quirk, calling Deku stupid, rejoining his group. When the event starts, Deku is the front horse, because of his overwhelming speed and power, being able to escape everyone, deciding not to take any headbands because they already had 1 million points. Monoma tried to use Deku's quirk against Bakugo, however it didn't work, as Deku had no quirk, so he assumes Deku's quirk is an accumulation type quirk, with Bakugo beating him, taking his headband, then rushing Deku with Shotus group, however they couldn't get anywhere near him. By the end of the event, Deku and his team are first, and everyone who passed in the original, still pass. Midnight then explains the battle tournament, with the brackets being the same, with the first round being Deku vs Hitoshi Shinso, with Deku being aware of the brainwashing, but accidentally speaking, allowing him to activate his quirk, but to Shinso's surprise, it did not work, as don't quote me on this, but I don't think telepathy forward slash telekinetic attacks like brainwashing work on one punch man, so Deku would just continue walking towards Shinso, complimenting his quirk, telling him that his strategy would have worked on anyone else, flicking Shinso out of the ring then correcting Shinso on his comment about him being blessed, with Deku telling Shinso that he is quirkless so any strength he has is from hard work and dedication, telling Shinso to try physically training if he wants to become a hero. While the last match of the first round is completing, Deku encounters Endeavor, with Endeavor telling him that his quirk rivals All Might's strength, asking Deku to push Shoto as much as he can, forcing him to use his flames. Hearing this, Deku is slightly angered, telling Endeavor that he is quirkless, and his power does not rival All Might, it long surpasses him, as he hasn't lost to All Might for the last 100 fights they had within the last 5 months, then telling Endeavor that Shoto is not him, but telling Endeavor that Shoto will use his fire against him but not for him, then walking away to get ready for the second round. When the Deku's second match against Shoto begins, Shoto instantly sends a barrage of heaven piercing ice walls at Deku, but Deku just flicks them away, while walking towards Shoto saying my, my that is a lot of ice Shoto, at this rate, you're going to freeze yourself and the whole stadium before you even touch me, maybe you should use your fire to warm you up, and make this fight a little fun, because you know you have no chance without it, fighting against me, hell you could probably not even beat Bakugo without it. Hearing this, Shoto is enraged, sending more ice towards Deku, yelling that he will never use his father's fire, not after what he did to his family, however Shoto starts to feel the effects of his ice, as his attacks slow down, and become even less effective. Deku the replies, telling Shoto that the fire is his and only his, not his father's, and if he wants to be a pro hero, he can't hold power back if he wants to save as many lives as he can. After Deku says these words, Shoto decides to use his fire side, setting the stadium ablaze, melting the ice on his right side, allowing him to attack again, telling Deku that he wants to become a hero, smiling. Endeavor, filled with joy to see his son finally deciding to use his firepower, walks down from the bleachers to watch the match at a closer range, telling Shoto to surpass him and realize his ambition, and to beat this rude brat, but he is completely ignored, as Shoto powers up a wave of ice, firing it towards Deku, then a wave of fire, rapidly expanding the air, creating an explosion dead on Deku, destroying the stage, knocking Shoto to the ground, but to everyone's shock, Deku just stood there with his clothes ripped, and barely staying on, however not a single scratch on him, with Deku, knocking Shoto out the ring with the air pressure of a flick, thanking Shoto for the match. Seeing this, Endeavor is infuriated, and disappointed in Shoto as even with his fire he couldn't even lay a finger on this boy, challenging Deku to a fight, to prove his superiority, with Deku accepting, telling him it will have to be after the final fight, with Midnight, Eraser Head, and Present Mick accepting the conditions because it will be good entertainment for the audience, and will better show off Deku's strength. After everyone finishes their matches, and Deku gets a new sports uniform, Deku has his match against Bakugo, promising not to go easy on Bakugo, after he shows off his techniques, with Bakugo trying as much as he can to damage Deku, with Deku cancelling the attacks with the flick of a finger, even Bakugo's howitzer impact, with Deku having enough of the fight, deciding to show some more of his power, appearing in front of Bakugo, grabbing his face, throwing him to the ground, outside the ring. 
then getting a drink, and returning to the ring, thanking Bakugo for the fight, extending his hand to help Bakugo up, however then realizing that he is unconscious from the impact of hitting the ground, telling Endeavor to get ready for their fight, while he takes Bakugo to Recovery Girl's office to rest. When he returns, Deku tells Endeavor, that he will let him hit him as much as he wants, and will only attack if Endeavor doesn't please him, with Endeavor just laughing, telling him that it will take him 10 seconds at maximum to beat him, with Shoto, asking Momo to create him a high-resolution camera, so he can record his father's loss at a high quality, as they know that not even All Might could beat Deku. Deku then tells Endeavor, if he's done gloating about his strength, he should probably start the fight, as he is getting quite bored, and has stuff to do, to try to aggravate Endeavor to use his full power. Fuming, Endeavor tells Deku, that he asked for it, firing a full power prominence burn, at Deku, with Deku pretending to be dead, then standing up, brushing the dust and ash of his shoulder, complimenting Endeavor on burning his shirt, while walking towards him, so Endeavor uses a hell's curtain, emitting a blanket of flames around Deku, following up with a hell minefield, sending a wave of fire towards Deku, from underneath, creating a huge explosion, however Deku just stood there asking if he can attack now, taking another step closer, so Endeavor tries a concentrated jet burn towards Deku, however it is still ineffective dealing no damage, with Endeavor now being at his limits, sweating profusely, however being unable to give up and lose to a child, he pushes past his limits, firing a hell spider towards Deku, whilst he is in the air, as to not harm the people in the stadium, however all it does is rips up the rest of Deku's UA Sports uniform, leaving him with only shorts, with Deku once again asking if that is all he has, because if so he is going to attack in a minute. Seeing no other option, Endeavor decides to take the fight to the sky, using a flash fire fist, then a vanishing fist, charging up all his remaining firepower in his right arm, engulfing it in flames, charging towards Deku, delivering a powerful hook punch to the chest, falling to the ground, with some burns on his body, out of breath, while Deku, just stands there uninjured, telling him, that he expected more from him, appearing behind Endeavor, delivering a weak chop to Endeavor's neck, knocking him out, then standing on Endeavor, lifting his arm in victory, then asking for yet another sports uniform, while carrying Endeavor to Recovery Girl's office, asking Shoto if that fight helped him, with Shoto telling him that he recorded the whole fight, and will send it to the whole class and his family, as they will love it, with Deku happy that it helped, dumping Endeavor's body on a bed, apologizing to Recovery Girl for bringing him in such a condition, however he deserved it. After the stage is rebuilt and the podium is made, the students are awarded their medals, with Deku jokingly asking All Might if he wants to have a quick fight, with All Might laughing, telling Deku that he doesn't want to end up looking like Endeavor over there, pointing to Endeavor in the stadium covered in bandages and a get well soon grandma balloon from Shoto tied around his arm, looking at Deku in shock, fear and rage. Meanwhile, at Hoju General Hospital, Ida learns that his brother was attacked by the hero killer and can never work as a hero again, devastating Ida, with him vowing he will get revenge. The next day, at home, Deku is eating breakfast with his mother, where she congratulates Deku on his victory at the sports festival, however slightly scolds him on going too harshly on Endeavor, but Deku tells her that he has his reasons, and telling her that if he didn't, Endeavor would never change, and would attribute his loss to a lack of speed and not power, so would still feel superior. Two days after the festival, on the train to school, most of the train recognized Deku for winning the festival and beating Endeavor, congratulating him, telling him that he will become the number one soon, however Deku is still a bit nervous so mumbles something along the lines of thank you I will try my best. In the class, Eraserhead congratulates most of the class on their results in the festival, showing them a tally of internship applications for the class, with Deku having the most, Shoto having a close amount in second due to Endeavor's influence, and Bakugo in third, with the rest of the class having none or up to 700 potential offers, then telling the students they will need to create hero names, inviting Midnight into the class to help them. All the students chose the same names as the original, with Deku's being the One Punch Hero Deku, with some people asking why he didn't choose something like One Punch Man, with Deku telling them he wanted to have Deku in his name as it has a special meaning to him. After class, All Might finds Deku taking him into the corridor, to give him the nomination to work under Gran Torino, who was All Might's homeroom teacher, with Deku telling him he hoped that he could work under All Might, and fight for the whole week, however he understands there is more to being a hero than fighting, so accepts the offer, seeing the fear all in All Might's face, hoping he is a strong opponent. When Deku arrives at Gran Torino's address, Deku enters the building, to see him laying on the floor in a pile of sauce he assumes to be blood, rushing to his side in an instant, checking his pulse, then realizing he is alive and faking, holding him by his cape, with Gran Torino laughing, telling him that he was carrying a plate of sausages when he fell and got ketchup everywhere. Gran Torino then continues his senile old man act, pretending to not remember anything and have bad hearing and sight, until Deku has enough of the joke so decides to leave, telling him that he doesn't have time for it, to call All Might, when Gran Torino demands for a fight, telling Deku to put on his costume, with it now being suit beater, jumping around the room at maximum speed due to watching the sports festival, surprising Deku, who catches the old man within a second, telling him that he is fast, but not fast enough, throwing him to the ground. Seeing that Gran Torino can't help Deku physically, he decides to help him with technique and control. At the same time, Stain has his disagreement with the League of Villains, angering Shigaraki, deciding to mess with him. On the third day of the internship, Deku takes the train through Hoju to go on patrol, to gain some experience, when the train is attacked by a no Mew, which is exploded shortly after by a punch from Deku, with Gran Torino telling him to stay on the train while he helps out, however Deku disobeys, running ahead, killing all the no Mew with ease 
putting out the fires with air pressure and changing the weather to make it rain, with a single punch, then going to look for Ida, arriving just before. Stain kills him, snapping Stain's sword, relocating Ida and Native, then reagaging Stain, who slashes him with his swords and knives, however they all shatter on contact, so Deku knocks him out with a chop, dropping Stain off at the police station, and taking Native and Ida to the hospital. After Ida recovers overnight, Shoto visits due to being in the area with Endeavor who wanted to take down the hero killer but by the time he had arrived, Deku had already sorted out the situation, also due to Deku arriving earlier, Ida has no permanent damage on his arms. After Shoto left, the chief of police, tells the students of Stain's condition, as the chop to the shoulder had broken his arm and shards of his blades, impaled his arms and legs, putting him in a critical condition, and he is lucky that he made it to the hospital so fast. He then tells them the quirk laws, about using quirks without a license, even if the hero killer was breaking laws so they would be punished for fighting the hero killer, unless they give the credit to Endeavor. Before he could finish, Deku asks for his medical records, giving the police chief, a copy of his records, proving that he was quirkless, then explaining that because Stain attacked first, it was self-defense meaning he didn't commit any crime, so he should keep the credit, however he doesn't really care about the credit as long as everyone is safe, then leaving with Gran Torino. The next day, Stain's defeat and arrest is reported on the news, with the credit going to Endeavor, to protect Ida, as he attacked Stain without a license. At the end of the week, Deku returns home, now having greater experience being a hero and more advanced fighting techniques, but no increase in power considering there is no point, as he is already OP. With their internships concluded, the students return to UA, having a foundational hero study lesson with All Might, where the students will show off what they learned, with it being a rescue race, which Deku won with ease, reaching All Might, before anyone else could even react to the distress signal. While waiting for the other students to complete the race, All Might tells Deku to meet him after class concludes to talk about One for All, shocking Deku as despite being All Might's successor, he does not want to inherit One for All. After everyone finishes the race, and Deku is crowned the victor, Deku and All Might go to their usual break room, where All Might explains the origins of One for All, telling him the reign and fall of All for One, telling Deku that he believes All for One has returned, surviving his fight with him all those years ago, and is now acting as the brains behind the League of Villains, telling Deku that one day as his successor, they will have to fight, and due to hiding all these years, he may be stronger than ever, putting fear in Deku, but slightly exciting him due to the possibility of a challenge. All Might then hands Deku a file on a UA student, Myrio Tagate, hero named Lemillion, member of the UA Big Three, with his records, telling Deku that he has chosen Lemillion to be the successor for One for All, however wanted to ask Deku, his opinion before transferring One for All to him. With Deku mumbling as he reads the file, but ultimately telling All Might that he believes that he is the perfect candidate, and that once he is fully trained, he will be an amazing hero and may be able to challenge him in a fight. Hearing this, All Might calls Lemillion to the break room, over the school intercom system, with Deku still in the room when Lemillion arrives, even when All Might is offering one for all, with Lemillion accepting, and due to his training with Night Eye, All Might can instantly transfer one for to him, forcing Lemillion to eat one of his hairs, with Deku thinking that he really dodged a bullet, by training to be strong, otherwise it would have been him eating here. Just like Deku in the original, at first, Lemillion couldn't control one for all, always using 100% breaking his bones, but by training with Deku and All Might, he discovers one for all full cowling, and would probably be able to use anywhere for 20 to 30% of one for all. After training with one for all for a week, Lemillion felt comfortable enough to challenge Deku to a sparing match, using both permeation and one for all 30%, to land multiple hit on Deku, while his guard was down, however none of his techniques were working, with Deku catching one of his punches in an instant, and before Lemillion could permeate again, Deku chopped him in the neck, knocking him out, taking him to Recovery Girl to rest, then saying goodbye to All Might, returning to class. Back at class, Azawa reveals the forest training camp over summer break, telling the students that if they don't pass the end of term test, they will be stuck in remedial courses at school while the rest of the class is at the camp having fun together. Eventually the day of the end of term test arrives, with it being revealed that the students won't be fighting robots this year, due to all the villain attacks, instead they will be fighting one of the UA members of staff, with Deku fighting all of the teachers, and the top 10 pro heroes, All Might, Endeavor, Hawks, Best Genist, Ed Shot, Myriko, Crust, Yoimashu, Ryuku, Gang Orca, without any handicaps, while Deku wears 10 of the high-density wrist weights on each limb, each weight, equaling 50% of his body weight so in total, 20 times his body weight. When his match begins, Deku is instantly hit with an onslaught of attacks, following a plan created by Nezu, as all the heroes know just how dangerous Deku is, after a while of being attacked, Deku walks through the attacks, deciding to deal with the long to mid-ranged heroes, leaving only the close-range heroes such as Azawa, All Might, Myriko, Hawks, and also leaving Endeavor, as he wants to have a mini-fight with him before All Might, then motioning his hands in a way to taunt the heroes to attack, with All Might using a Detroit Smash, Endeavor using a synchronized vanishing fist to the chest, Azawa wrapping his binding cloth around Deku's head covering his eyes, and Myriko landing a powerful kick to Deku's back, however this doesn't even stumble Deku, pulling Azawa with the muscles in his neck, swinging him around, by his binding cloth, throwing him at Myriko, then appearing before All Might, flicking him in the air, then slamming him into the ground, telling him and Endeavor to 
Wait, while he deals with the other two, chopping Myriko and Azawa in the neck, knocking them out, adding them to the growing pile of unconscious heroes in the middle of the battleground, then walking towards Endeavor and All Might, telling them that playtime is over, and if this is all they have, he is disappointed, as they couldn't even work as a team due to Endeavor's stupid grudge and prejudice against All Might for being stronger than him, telling them that if they want to have a chance of defeating him, then they need to work together, with All Might agreeing, and Endeavor angrily nodding yelling that he is only doing this to get back at him for embarrassing him at the sports festival, then extending a hand to help All Might out of his crater, telling him a plan he came up with, then both of them rushing towards Deku, launching ignited arrows, with All Might, using the air pressure of his punches to speed up the arrows, with Deku instinctually dodging, catching one, throwing it back at them, with it barely going in between the both of them, Endeavor then uses his Hell Spider attack, with Deku dodging and weaving between each pillar of fire, while All Might inches closer towards Deku, using a New Hampshire smash, to launch himself towards Deku, grabbing him using a Oklahoma smash on Deku, whirling him around, spinning him with so much force that Deku is launched through ten buildings, each with a Hell's Curtain in between them to deal extra damage, with Endeavor. Waiting outside the last house, after charging up his firepower releasing it in a massive jet burn, directly into Deku's chest, launching him back to All Might, who follows up with a Nebraska smash followed by a Texas smash, propelling Deku into the ground, then picking him up, throwing him, then jumping into the air, throwing a Carolina smash, towards Deku, sending him flying, in the trajectory towards Endeavor, where he is grabbed from the back, with Endeavor's arms locking Deku's arms in place. Flying into the air, charging up a prominent spurn at maximum power, charring Deku's body, then using a hellfire storm, throwing Deku to the ground, where he is met with a United States of Smash to the face by All Might, creating a massive creator destroying half the city, leaving Deku laying on the ground, with no signs of moving soon. Witnessing this in the viewing room, the students are shocked, as they thought that Deku was unbeatable, however Bakugo was happy yelling that's what you deserve, for acting so cocky, if you had dodged that first blow, you would have been fine, however you wanted to show off, now look where that got you, unconscious in a ditch, covered in dirt and ash, and a world of pain. At the same time, Endeavor lands next to All Might, with the both of them out of breath, just about to fall unconscious themselves, with Endeavor weakly asking if they won, while laughing, when Deku gets up without a single scratch, brushing of dirt, complaining about them burning his hero costume, then thanking them for getting rid of that click he had in his neck, asking them if they are ready for round two, appearing in front of both of them punching them in the chest, throwing them in the air, then slamming them in the ground next to the rest of the teachers, telling them it was a fun match, and he can tell that Endeavor has gotten stronger, then getting an American cheeseburger and a cola within a second, then taking all the teachers and heroes to recovery girl's office, with most of them resting on the floor due to a lack of beds, needing to stay overnight to heal, then returning to the viewing area, jokingly asking if he passed, with the class looking at him in shock, out of words to describe him. Okay guys this is where I am going to be leaving this video off, as next in the timeline is the two hero movie, and I like to dedicate a whole part for the movies, I hope you enjoyed the coup destroying everyone, please like and subscribe, as it helps to motivate me to upload, and with that all being said, this is Demon Xayan signing out bye.